Hello guys, this is Jonathan Munoz and today I want to talk to you about what is coming next for you which is the um, the match day and we did the soap process and there's not much that you can do about it if you didn't have interviews of course you're not going to match but I'm going to give you a, a piece of advice that I want you to to consider and and you really have time to work into this, especially if you haven't had any interviews. And I want you to, to look at the options that we have available for you. Um, so for example, let's start with, um, let's say you are going to, you foresee that you're going to a soap process. So what are the two things that you can change? Are your ERAS CV and your personal statement. Why? Because when, when we go to interview people, uh, applicants, the the most important pieces of paper that we carry with us to kind of guide the conversation are your CV and your personal statement. So if in your CV, when we quickly read this, this CV that we have, the era CV, we quickly read something that, that may catch our attention, like your commitment with the underserved populations, your research on uh, chronic conditions, management of chronic conditions, and your, your innovation, innovative ideas on, on the management of chronic conditions, or, or your, your interest on palliative care, which I really think are three big things in, um, in primary care specialties. Um, so if you kind of delineate those, those things in, in your interview or in your, in your era CV and you kind of give me those hints, I probably will be able to, to ask questions that are more into that rather than being asking you, um, I don't know, like questions that are looking more into your personality. I will be more interested on in trying to see, oh, okay, this guy has so much interest in doing this and he seems to be prepared to manage chronic conditions. So this is my guy, instead of trying to, to figure out your, your real personality, I will try to invest more of my time trying to see why are you interested in this? So on your ERAS CV, when you describe, for example, let's look at this, this ERAS CV description of um, a rotation that this, this applicant had. So for this applicant, she did a rotation on, with a refractory consultant in Houston a clinical elective for this amount of time. So the description that she says or she gives is a hands-on clinical rotation in pulmonology inpatient rounds at Houston Methodist Hospital. Attended a conference on contemporary approaches to pulmonary arterial hypertension, uh, which I don't care at all unless you, you are a pulmonary or pulmonologist in your country and that's why you have such an interest on pulmonary arterial hypertension. Otherwise you were just there in the moment of the conference and you attended it. Uh, learn how to perform pulmonary function tests and assess them in depth and in detail, common lung pathologies, their management and newer therapies available. So this is good to the point that you are giving things like their management and newer therapies available because again, you're not a pulmonologist. Whatever you, you learn in that little rotation of two months is not enough for you to say, oh yeah, I can manage COPD in detail exactly as a pulmonologist or I can man manage pulmonary fibrosis or sleep apnea. So as long as you tell me that the, you learn how to perform, not even to perform pulmonary function tests, that's not the key because in internal medicine or family practice, you're not going to be doing performing pulmonary function tests. You are going to be interpreting the pulmonary function test. And yes, it's important for you to know how, how the test is performed, but usually this is done by the technicians. And once the result is done, then you, you get a piece of paper that tells you all the values and with those values, you have to identify if this is uh, COPD, if this is asthma, what is this condition based just on those pulmonary values. Um, then this, this is applicant says, observe procedures such as bronchoscopy, chest tube placements, fluorocentesis. 
observe procedures. See, that, that description is, is just a description of a rotation. It doesn't tell me what were you doing there, what did you really learn or caught your attention that's going to be useful for me. Are you going to do bronchoscopies at your level? No. Are you going to do chest tube placements in your first year? No, you're, it's, this is something that you're going to learn. So unless you were doing this in your country as a pulmonologist, um, then this is not relevant. Uh, and achieve expertise in diagnosing different lung pathologies based on spirometry. And again, she lost the opportunity to use this line to, to say something else. And because she say, she's saying the same that she did on you know, the three lines above. And so spirometry is probably one of the, the tests that you have to learn how to, how to supervise and how to uh, interpret. But for you to say achieve expertise in diagnosing different lung pathologies, that's a big lie. And then you just lost an opportunity to truly say what things are, are of your interest. So you're not an expert in diagnosing pulmonary pathologies because I'm pretty sure I give you a, a case of COPD versus CHF and you, you will still have doubt because that is natural. You're in a, in a learning stage. You're, you're starting to get to use to, to the healthcare system that is new to you. So let's use these parts of the era CV to give um, a description, a history of what took you to do this rotation. For example, this person did a, a pulmonary um, elective or this is a critical care elective. So you have to, uh, uh, on the organization and location, instead of just saying respiratory consultant, this is an opportunity for you to say um, pulmonary clinic, intensive care unit, rotation, um, a sleep, a sleep clinic, and in the description, in the description, this is probably the the most important part. That what is there that I can I can read that you did or you learn that is telling me this person is a culturized. This person needs or has the basics of what I need. For example, for this patient, let, let's for this person, let's start saying. Uh, hands-on clinic rotation in pulmonology in patient runs at Houston, blah, blah, blah. Um, so I will change all that line to, to say this was a, a very immersive opportunity to, to observe the uh, most important cases of uh, pulmonary pathologies in, in the outpatient clinic and in the inpatient care setting where we had opportunity to do um, clinical assessments and didactic sessions where I was able to present case reports of the pathologies that we were seeing on a daily basis. With this, learning how to supervise pulmonary function test and to interpret the results in a way that will be beneficial to, to help with the treatment plan for these patients. I also had vast opportunities to observe chest tube placements, pleurocentesis, thoracocentesis, and to learn the process that leads to, to choose to move to a more advanced procedures such as bronchoscopy or an ablation in selected patients. Why? Why am I saying these words? Because each of the words that I just mentioned are key words. I'm talking about outpatient, inpatient. Why? Because not many know that you are coming to uh, a specialty, internal medicine or family practice that have 
the opportunity to do outpatient and inpatient. Not many know that um, pulmonary function tests, you have to supervise and make sure that the people that are doing the, the pulmonary function, function tests are doing it well, so you have good results. So you have to learn how, to, how this proce process is done in order to supervise and get good results, but you also have to know how to interpret the results, which is ultimately the most important. Why? Because once you have a result interpreted, you can say, okay, we need a pulmonary consultant. We need uh, a referral for this patient to get, a, um, I don't know, an, a nebulizer machine. So, see, th her description is not terrible, but I think she's missing an opportunity to really say, what was important, what is important that she learned that it could be used in, in residency. For lastly, last and last, one of the things that you should not miss to add on this era CV description is that you learn the importance of accurate clinical documentation. Why? Why is so important for everyone in, in, in the medical healthcare system? Because First of all, and most important, uh, it changes or it really conveys the severity of illness of your patient. And with that comes um, ratings, ratings that you get for how sick is this patient, is this patient about to die, or is this patient healthy and why are you doing this? But you get those points, you get to, to categorize your patient at the level that he really is. And then it gives a lot of money to the system, to the healthcare system. Hosp hospitals are paid based on your documentation. So if you understand the importance of an accurate diagnosis, such as respiratory failure, a sleep apnea with oxygen, um, re with supplementation of, of oxygen at home, or uh, chronic respiratory failure, or COPD, chronic COPD, chronic asthma, you know the, the, the details on documentation then um, then I know like I can let you do notes. I can let you do progress notes, HMPs, and the degree of supervision that I will have if you are my, my, my resident is gonna be minimal. It's not going to signify a lot of work. I'm not going to, to have to say, hey, let's meet every day in the afternoon to, to teach you how, how to document so you can be at par with your with your colleagues. See, I'm trying to, to protect, to be honest, everyone, when, when we interview, when we uh, select applicants, we're trying to protect not only our time, but also the, the, the well-being of all the residents. Because we're gonna choose, we're going to choose people that are at the same level. So something in your application has to tell me that you are at that level. So don't forget, when you describe this, use these this important keywords. Don't don't waste your time on on saying things that um, are supposed to be there, like this. Use this time to say things that are important for the reader, like for me. Um, in these lines, I would like to read that you understand inpatient or patient. You understand why? Um, what is the the algorithm that tells you that this patient needs a bronchoscopy? or this patient needs a, uh, a lamb biopsy now, instead of doing all the workup, but you need something specific that is, it means an advanced procedure, why? And so if you, if you are able to, to put that on your ERA CV on every of each of the rotations that you had, and maybe you just had one rotation, one observ or a, a virtual observership rotation, you could still say that. These, these are things that you could say that are not going to harm you or are not going to need to be, um, I don't know, double check. Why? Because for example, if you say that you learned that um, early identification of chronic problems and aggressive, uh, aggressive um, management of risk factors became very important to me after the rotations as it changes the course of the disease and we eat with we avoid um, disabling 
outcomes. Let's say you said that. And to me, that's big because maybe you did a virtual observership, but you got the point of what is needed for primary care, that you need to learn how to manage chronic conditions. And why? Because there is a, a risk of causing disability. And then you also said, also in this rotation, I had the opportunity to understand the importance of accurate clinical documentation, meaning that um, the, the most accurate my documentation is the, the most, um, I don't know, the most available or the most accurate the um, depiction of this patient's severity or presentation is in the in the medical record. So these are my this is my advice for you to when you do your ERA CV, don't say uh, an important thing. So don't say that that I, I see on every ERA CV, which is um, what is this? Uh, I establish rapport with every each, each of my patients. Who cares about that? Do you establish a rapport anymore? I care about you understanding what is the core of this rotation. So this is it for the era CV. You have a chance to change it, look into it, change the things. Um, if one more thing is important that you get read, get this proof read. So I would even suggest for you to look into things like Fiverr or Coursera or places where you can hire someone to revise your CV and change the, the flow of the words for, for very cheap. I would say uh, I've seen prices going from 20 to $30 and you can get it as cheap and it's a very good investment. So if you have a chance to do that, please do. And the next video is going to be on the personal statement, so stay tuned.